Uh, the funny thing about magic is, is that magic can be, I, I, this is a great little anecdote. I was actually back home uh, in Oregon and um, I have two young nephews and on Christmas morning we were going to dinner and this, this will betray the hillbill, my hillbilly lineage, which is we went to a truck stop for, that we go to every Christmas dinner. Oh. And it's not, it's not because we enjoy hanging out with the truckers with the hats and everything. It's actually because it's the only restaurant that's open on that side of town. And uh, there was a guy there who was part of the truck stop ministries. Have you seen these guys? You probably yeah, haven't. They were unreligious. Right, they were. In um, the Bill so, Mars movie, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, they yeah. were totally there. So he had like a, you know, he had a collar and he had a name tag on and he had a shirt that said truck stop ministries. And I can tell he used this on kids before. So he did like this funny magic trick with like a rubber band in his hand. And I, I think I was able to actually figure out how he did it at the end. And then he basically said, he prefaced everything that he said by saying, oh, no, no, this is, this is magic. This wasn't real. And then I said, and I pulled him aside and I'm like, that was great. I think I know what you, you know what you're doing here. And I said, but with you saying magic is not, magic is not real is like saying professional wrestling isn't real, which is the perfect ontological description for magic is that it is real. It's the people who are, P Penn Jillette does magic. Magic is real. Now, the thing that you're supposed to be tricked into Wait. thinking that's actually happening, that is, what's happening is not real. But magic itself is real. It's completely and totally real. Well, as uh, Job from uh, Arrested Development says, you know, illusions, Michael, <laughs> not tricks. <laughs> but it is right. trickery. Um, I mean, that's essentially what, what Penn, Penn Jillette and, and Teller do is, is trickery. Right. Um, well, yes, but that and that is a, a real problem with the definition of magic, is some people will define magic as trickery, while others, you know, insist that we're talking more about sorcery here, about the yeah. suspension of reality. Now, I'm not saying I think that you can suspend science. I think science is all there is. But, um, you know, I'm open to the idea, if someone can show me, like really show me that magic exists uh, in terms of, like, sorceress magic, Right. Uh, I'd be willing, I'd be open-minded about it. I'd, right. I'd, I'd take a look. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree. I can't disagree with what uh, Casey said, that if this type of thing was real, that if you waved your hand and a chicken appeared, um, and there was, an, you know, he said no explanation other than that, uh, then there would be an it to talk about. In the end, it's just kind of like when people get into arguments about whether Kirk or Picard was a better captain, <laughs> that you're having hypothetical uh, discussions about something that isn't real. Right. We can't so, test it. We just can't be tested. So nobody is going to win this argument. Um, oh, because, that, that's true. Well, have you, have you, uh, do you know who Jim Rose is? Jim Rose, the guy. I know guy. the name. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, actually, now that you mention it, okay. Yeah, it's coming back to me. He's got that, like, a traveling room yes. show. Yes, so he, he, was t he was very famous in the early 90s with, with opening for bands like Nine Inch Nails and stuff, which is why I know of him, and then I saw him here. He did this great interview with Michio Kaku, who is a physicist who does a radio show, and um, he has a, I don't remember, is it Snake Oil was the name of his book, I think, and he has this great story where um, there was a, a illusionist that goes in and basically went in and did a study about, they did a study about belief, and he went in and they, they're at a university and they took four or five professors, and then he did some kind of illusion, and even he, was, even this illusionist was able to fool these professors into thinking that something that didn't actually happen, happened. And it was, it w was not because, it's not because there was actually something crazy going on here, it's that even the people whose minds are the, the sharpest toned to be skeptical, can be, f that, w that weird brain failure can be tricked when something happens, when some weird little illusion happens. And, you know, these physicists were actually like, wait a minute, we need to study this. Not, not re actually realizing that someone was brought in here specifically to fool them, to fool their fancy, schmancy, I, you know, I think ed that's educated why, brains. I think that's why a lot of these prominent skeptics, whether it's uh, Penn and Teller, uh, James Randi, or Harry Houdini, who is kind of like, I like to think of him as the golden age uh, James Randi. That <laughs> um, his arch nemesis, instead of being um, Yuri Geller, was, was uh, Arthur Conan Doyle. Right. Um, but it, I think the reason that they're skeptical is their first thought is not, oh my god, this guy has, he can shoot fire out of his hands. I mean, their, their first thought is, I wonder how he did that. I'd like to do that. And I, yeah, I well, think that's the sort of mentality they have. Right. Uh, well, I mean, this is why um, on my YouTube channel, I constantly advocate like, empirical Kate, you testing. Can, you can pick that channel address if you want to. Yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll, let you, we'll let you go ahead and, and call out the URL if you want, want to. Okay, well, I mean, I mean, you know, if you just go to, um, to YouTube and type bionic dance, all one word, into the search bar, you'll find me. I've got awesome. almost 200 videos. I'm about to make my 200th later today. So. Awesome. Oh, congratulations. Perfect. Well, yeah. uh, thank you for calling, Kate, and I appreciate the topic. Glad for the, the shout-out. Um, but we need to move quite along because I don't think Mike's even got to his topic yet. No, Absolutely. I and I, I love your show, and let's hope we get some CS callers, right? <laughs> I yes. hope so. Yes, yes. Thanks All so right. much, Kate. Later. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. 
So I want to do some emails real yeah, quick? Yeah, let's let's do one or two, and then I just don't want to get gut bogged down. So. Oh, well, this this one is a really important email. You, uh, you should. I mean, this is it the was, most important email. We've, we've never got an important email more important I mean, this, this. is this, this tops getting a, an email from the president himself. <laughs> uh, we have an email from Yahweh. Of course. Who it's actually amazing. has his email in Lord Yah Lord dot Yahweh seven seven seven? Right. So and um, I was I was saying earlier if he w if he actually was the creator of the universe why wasn't he able to get to this uh, just Lord Yahweh yeah, j just Yahweh at why yeah he, I, don't I don't know you think he, you think there would have been a Yahweh dot com <laughs> he would have had his own his own uh, he life. would have he would have registered it in nineteen ninety six instead yeah of him, seriously yeah. he would have foreseen this and yeah. just who yeah, knows go ahead. But, you know, maybe it's the same problem that he can't, you know, you still have to mark the doors. <laughs> I mean, he's not perfect. You throw an iron chariot at him and you feed him. It's like he's kryptonite. Yeah, it is. That, um, so, anyways, it's, this is the email from Yahweh. Right. Dear atheists, as the main deity of the judo Christian faith, J judo Christian. J-U-D-O. That's, that's, I believe, a more <laughs> defensive style of Christianity involving more blocks and throws. Uh, I decided to roll with the times and make my presence known and by the way, my is also capitalized, known on the internet. Because clearly there isn't enough religion on the internet. Sure. Uh, I made a channel on YouTube, but seemed to mainly get atheists to watch me. My question, therefore, is what proof would you need to accept me, also capitalized, into your hearts, and therefore, uh, and why uh, Christians fail to subscribe? One, I think, probably because you're not real. <laughs> both, both as an idea and as a being, um, Mr. Poe. But yeah. I would say little, that little Poe here. Yeah, that's big Poe. Um, no, and he signs it God on the end. He signs it G -O -D. God. G O D. G O D. Um, I'm going to assume that judo Christianity, since he's an inerrant being, <laughs> is probably intentional because Yahweh sometimes likes to cut vowels out of things. <laughs> but yeah. I, I would say, what would what proof would you take? I would say you'd have to manifest in some way. Give me yeah. something to look at and study. Don't just simply try to argue yourself into existence and define yourself into existence with weird little choose your own adventure games. Um, yeah, I actually challenge God if he if he is really a judo master, he should do a hip throw right now, right just right now, right on my back. Come on, come on! A special effects budget, you can get more than a hip throw. I, yeah. I think you can get a Hadouken. Out of <laughs> yes. I, I think something really major. Obviously, Probably one of those crazy Street Fighter tour multiple hits. Sure. Yeah, it's got a. 13 hit combo or 13 something. 13 hit combo. I, I, I don't get 777 that. hit combo. I think I just, you don't need to be a martial artist to hit somebody 13 times in a row and win. <laughs> I bet you that if somebody didn't fight back 13 times in a row, I think I would have won that fight. Yeah. Well, what else do we got here? Oh, this one is actually interesting. So I made the first time I was on the show, I made this call out to Matt Dillahunty, who is his, what is it, his atheist heretic apostate decadency I don't know what his name yeah he's the uh, I don't know his title but we should we should give you a better title than that um, someone a guy named Charlie said well, that he likes the, the challenges real quick oh the challenge again uh, basically I wanted to uh, challenge the atheist experience who was certainly they were on before us but we want to settle once and for all which show is the better show and so uh, we've called out uh, Matt Delonte to have a one-on-one -on -one Street Fighter 2 HD Turbo remix that's a great segue. Over, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's awesome. Over Xbox Live, uh, and uh, we've sort of coordinated. We're gonna have we're gonna have actually a, a, a live streaming event going on here, mm -hmm. um, which will be sometime in the near future. I know that I I talked to Matt through Facebook a bit, and uh, actually his initial reaction to this challenge was, oh, this is this is gonna be trouble, <laughs> because uh, he did nothing but play Street Fighter Two while he was serving in the Gulf. Right, where he's and birthed in Kuwait or so. It, it was, was just it was just you know it was gonna yeah. be painful for Casey. That's before he mentioned Casey was a world champion. <laughs> then uh, Matt mentioned that he'd actually downloaded it and hadn't played in a really long time right but and then he also didn't like the way the controller felt and actually this guy has a really good yeah. uh, I think a good suggestion to sort of offset this yeah he he wrote in about our the spirituality which we're going to talk about a little bit later um, but his first was uh, he said I find it unfair to challenge Matt to a game that one of you happens to be very good at well to be fair he did say he was really good at it yeah. I suggest then that you play the requested SF game a game of match choice and a choice from the fans you could do a poll on your page to increase traffic yada 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 so we do know that Matt is awesome at Guitar Hero and I stink at Guitar Hero so we might be able to do both we might be able to have uh, maybe me to do some like licks on like a David Bowie song and see who can I'm sure he'll be hot cross buns I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure he'll kick my ass but we we uh, we wanted to open it up, and of course, you you elevated the challenge by having a Pat Robertson audiobook as yes. the prize. 